Hi, I'm Ben, and this is my podcast where I share interviews, tips, and ideas to help you build a better marketing strategy. This is the second of six episodes in which I'll be walking you through the foundation level of my marketing strategy. It's going to give you ideas, advice, and guidelines in a simple step by step process, and it will work for any startup or business new to marketing. The episodes cover planning, which we've already done, stats, which is this one, website development, search optimization, social media, and business tasks that you need to do to get your marketing strategy a great foundation. If you want to jump ahead, by the way, everything I'm talking about is available now on our website, ratherinventive.com slash marketing hyphen strategy. For now, here's part two, and it's all about stats and analytics. Enjoy. So that's kind of covered off the planning section. And if anything, I would spend more time on, on your planning than anything else, really, because every every um, sort of hour you spend there is going to save you so much time uh, in the future. Moving on to the next section, we've got analytics. So this is all of the data and stats that we want to collect. We're not going to do too much with it right now. All I want you to do is start setting things going. So in the future, uh, when it comes to looking at the other strategy levels, we've got something to work with. First thing to do is set up your Google account. Um, now, if you don't have a Google account already, um, then set one up for the business. Um, maybe call it, uh, use your full company name, like my company name at gmail.com. Uh, and most of the stuff I'm gonna recommend in terms of services requires a Google account of some sort. So make sure that's, not, that's set up in advance so it's nice and easy for you to do so. If you have one already, no problem, just carry on and use that. So the first thing to set up is a Google Analytics profile. Now, if you've not used Google Analytics before, it can be a little overwhelming. Um, basically, Google Analytics is a statistics package that gives you the numbers of um, uh, people visiting your website. So it tells you uh, how many people are visiting, what page, uh, when they're visiting, and where they came from. And so they're the useful bits of information I've, I've I find, and you can use that to help you understand what, um, how your marketing's working, maybe whether your social media posts are working well, which pages people prefer, um, maybe if you've got a sales funnel where people move from uh, one page, a blog post, through to a landing page, through to a, a form, you can see where they're dropping off and where you need to improve things. So Google Analytics is a really useful tool, but it can be a bit overwhelming in the data it provides you. However, it's worth adding on and spending a bit of time um, uh, with it later on. And in fact, number 10 is a beginner's guide to Google Analytics where I go through um, the key things I, I feel you need to know about it, what the terminology is, which are my favorite reports and that sort of thing. So definitely worth doing that and uh, having a read through that once you set up Google Analytics. And if you're not sure if you wanna set it up, read through the guide first. But essentially with setting up Google Analytics, you will need to, uh, with your Google account, uh, just search for Google Analytics and go and create a new account, create a profile. And then once you finish that process, it's all reasonably self-explanatory as you go through. Google will give you a code, um, a tracking code, and you can add that to your website. For WordPress websites, we often use a plugin called Monster Insights, and so you'll just put the code into that. Um, or you can actually log into your Google account via Monster Insights, and it connects the dashboard, a little stats dashboard, into WordPress. But the reason I use that is because it can do other things like anonymize the IP address, which is great for GDPR. It can track downloads and it integrates all the code needed for e-commerce. So it kind of does everything for you. Um, if you get stuck, I've put um, some links to analytics setup guide and also the Monster Insights plugin as well. Do read the guide. It's worth, um, it, it's just gonna give you a head start really on the terms. Um, next is to, uh, verify your website on Google Search Console. So Google Analytics is great for get, getting data about who's doing what on your website. Google Search Console is absolutely a fab tool for understanding how you are getting found on Google Search. So what it's gonna give you once you've signed up to it and verified your profile, um, your property, is it's going to show you the number of times you come up in Google Search. 
It's going to tell you how many people click through to your website from Google search. And it's also going to tell you what keywords you're found for. It's absolutely fab. And if, you, if you're doing search engine optimization, you need this tool installed. So um, what you'll need to do is you'll need to Google search, um, Google search console. You need to sign up and then you need to add your website or properties, it's called. Now, the best way to do this is through um, you need to verify ownership of the domain name. It will take you through that process. Uh, you will need access to wherever your domain name is. So if you're using 123reg or Fasthost for your domain name, then you'll need access to that control panel because it's going to give you a little bit of code that you go and put in there. It's not the easiest thing to do. But if you've already got a web developer or someone who manages that for you, it's going to give you the code and you can hand it to them. Or better yet, you can ask them to do this process for you. Um, if you can't add in um, a record into your domain name, then if you've already got Google Ana Analytics installed on your website, then you can also verify using that code too. Uh, it's not the best way to do it, but you can do it that way as well. Um, once you've got Google Search Console on, then you'll get all the, this lovely data and it's really useful um, in terms of understanding what's going on with your site, what uh, keyword position you are, and if there's any problems to the site, which we'll come to later on. I hope you enjoyed that section. But as a little bonus, here's an extract from my Better Marketing Strategy Workshop. Um, and this section is where I look at Google Analytics reports, uh, the ones that I use, and the numbers that I regularly monitor. It hopefully will dive into a little bit more detail about the stats we should be using on a day-to-day -day basis. You measure what works, so you find a way that means something to you and do more of it. And I would look for people taking action, not just engagement. A lot of people just look for likes and shares. But that, while that's nice, I think it's a bit of a vanity metric. I think it's nice to look for people taking action. Have they clicked out of Facebook? Have they, have they taken the effort to move away from uh, Instagram? Or have they listened to your podcast or video and gone over to your sales page? That is an action and that is meaningful because it means something has resounded with those people. You've actually got them to take the time out to do something different. So by all means, if you want to measure uh, likes and shares, but really it's the action. And it could be triggering people to buy something online is the action that we're measuring. So try and make it meaningful. I want to look for the channels or the, the sort of marketing sources that bring in the most visitors. And by that, I could mean um, organic search. So Google, Bing, so people coming in from those sites. Social media, uh, do people come in from Twitter or do they come in from YouTube? Um, which channels convert the most visitors? So I'm interested in what channels bring in lots of visitors to the website, but I'm most interested in the ones that convert to the highest proportion. And by convert, um, all I want to do on our site is get people to sign up to our club. And there's a free part of the club. So I just want people to sign up to that. So I'm looking at, do the videos I put out online have the most people coming through to the website and then filling out the form to sign up to the club? Because if that is the case, then I need to spend more time and effort on those videos because I, um, I can see I'm getting, it, it's less, I'm putting my effort into where I'm getting the most payback, if that makes sense. Um, which articles and landing pages do people start on? So maybe they come in from uh, LinkedIn or uh, Twitter and they come onto various different blog posts, but which ones are the ones that trigger people to come to the site? What do I need to write more about? Um, and then obviously the number of signups to my club. So how many people are actually signing up? So I'm, I'm trying to look for meaningful things, not necessarily stuff that generates money, but stuff that will link into um, ultimately expanding my audience in a meaningful way. So in terms of visitors, where do they come from? Well, uh, Google Analytics, I don't know if you have that installed, uh, if you've got a website connected to your website, but um, you should definitely give this a go. There are many other stats tools, but Google Analytics is free and a good place to start. Um, I like using the, uh, if you can see on the left-hand side of the image there, you've got acquisition, then overview. So if you go into that section in Google Analytics, it presents you with something like this. And this shows you a breakdown of each of the channels. So you've got direct, that's people who came to the site um, and we don't know what the source was, or they just typed in and came directly, or maybe they clicked a link in the bottom of your email. Then you've got organic. So that's the number of people coming in from Google, 
Bing, other search engines like that. Referral, so that's coming in from another website, or social, so that's where they come in from, you know, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all that sort of stuff. And it's quite good on there, you can look at users. Now users are the number of unique people coming in. So that gives you an idea about how, roughly how many people on average are coming in each month. Um, and you've also got other numbers like how long they stay for. Um, it doesn't break it down so much in this particular view. There are others where you can break them down more specifically, but I can see overall that people stay uh, on this site for about 45 seconds. Now that might be good. It might be that 45 seconds is perfect. And I actually want to bring that down a little bit. Um, it could be that people stay on your site for 10 minutes. That could be bad because it could be that they can't find the information they want. They're interested and they're spending the time and effort, but they can't find what they want. So they're having to spend a lot of time reading and clicking around. You're going to have to use your judgment on what's better, whether it's um, a quicker time or a longer time. Um, but you, it's nice to have numbers that you can look at and compare. Um, pages per session, that's the number of pages they look at when they come onto your website and stay for, for um, a period of time. Generally speaking, I would say the longer people spend, the better, and the more pages, um, the better, to some degree. Um, you'll find a, a rough amount, but it's good to get to know the numbers so you, you know um, the sort of health of your site there. But I look at whether they come from, how long they stay, what pages they land on first, and how many bounce. I'm really interested in the landing pages, which you can get to in the behavior section. Also, how many bounce? It might be that you get a lot of traffic coming in from one particular source, but they bounce, which means they only look at one page and no more. And so it may mean that they get everything they need from that one page, or it may mean that they don't get everything they need and they bounce back quickly into Google and they're not interested. So you've got to use judgment as to whether it's important or not. But generally speaking, we don't want a high bounce rate. I'd probably aim for less than 50% if you can. Depends what it is. You can see on this, in, in this example, we've got social is at 75% bounce rate it's likely those um, social visits are coming into a blog post and they're reading the blog post and going back to their social media network. It might be that we want to spend a little bit more time trying to get them to stay, read something else. Um, maybe moving call to actions around or just make it more engaging to stay there for a bit longer. Something that can be really useful, it might be a bit advanced for some of you, but I'll mention it, is this campaign builder. And it allows you, if you're doing <clears throat> lots of ads or you're putting links to your website in lots of different places, you can add tags to those links, which helps you identify the work that you're doing and the campaigns things are under. Um, so in this example, Hogue wanted to track the emails that they were sending out. They had two separate emails, a personal sales email. So it was a manual email. So they'd copy and paste the text in and send it out to specific people. But they wanted to track whether those people were coming back and reading the resource online. So what we did is put this campaign source in place so we could see the campaign source is Outlook. It's coming from that Outlook email. The campaign medium is email um, and it's got a name called personal sales email. And we had two different emails. There was this new finance one and something else. And so what we could do is when they're sending out the emails, we could compare which one works best and how many of those people were clicking through. And all you'd need to do is rather than having a link to your website, which is that one at the top website URL, you put in all the details and then it generates a new web page link for you and you copy that in instead. I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but for those of you who are doing a lot of um, campaigns and trying to group things together, this can be very effective. The thing that a lot of people don't have in place, but I think it's particularly important is a goal, certainly on Google Analytics. Uh, a goal is when someone visits a page on your website. Now, if you think about an e-commerce website, this is quite easy to identify what the goal is. The goal is the thank you page. It's the final purchase page where they have paid and they're just giving an order summary at the end. We've taken the money. Everything's being completed. That is the main goal on an e-commerce website. You've got multiple stages up until that point. You've got where people add into the cart or the basket. You've got where they fill out their contact details where they put their payment information in, and then finally through to purchase in this case. And it's quite good for you to not only put a goal in, because then you can see how many people come in from Twitter and buy, or how many people come in from Google and buy. It can give you that information. But you can also improve your funnel. 
And so this is a funnel on here. You can see how people move from the cart all the way through to purchase. And you can see here, I've highlighted a particular section. And we can see that actually quite a number of people will come into the cart and then move through to contact and then come back round to the cart again. So you can see them coming right back round. And that means that they're, and, and they obviously don't continue. They're not continuing on. And what that's saying to me is there's something they're unsure about. They're coming back from the contact page through to the cart and then leaving. They don't want to continue on to payment. And that to me means that we need to allay their fears. Maybe we need to put some testimonials on there, write some FAQs, explain what's going to happen next because they're not sure. Um, but we can then, then see a number have gone through to payment and then purchase. So it can give us a really good idea about how people are moving through our site. Um, so from this information, how many succeed? That's really good. Which sources convert best? Um, which can give you a little insight on there. Where do people get stuck? And where do they drop out? So it can give you a bit more of a clear insight as to how your website's performing. But you can do this with any website. Um, if I go back to the Alex, Alex Coppox uh, Community Architects website, we have this um, form where it takes people from the contact page through to a form and then through to a thank you page. Well, the thank you page for um, filling out the form is the goal, but then we've got the different stages between. So we can see how many people land on the contact page and go through to the form, how many people actually fill out the form. It's quite useful and interesting to see. Can we put more information on the form? Can we put a video on the form to explain why we need to take this information? If you found this podcast interesting, then you might like my marketing club. You can join for free to receive regular tips and advice so you can become more effective in marketing your business. Pro members get access to my live webinars every single month, along with all the previous webinars I've done. It's about two years worth now. There's even a podcast version that you can listen to while you walk the dog. You can find out more by visiting ratherinventive.com slash club. That's ratherinventive.com slash club. Bye for now. Dick and bum, 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 dick and bum.